the divided kingdom, the northern kingdom of Israel. The kingdom of Israel, established under David, is split into two, just two generations later, Judah in the south and Israel in the north. This division aroused due to the northern king establishing a new religion to avoid the influence of Judah. This session delves into the consequences of these decisions, including the succession of ungodly kings in the north and the ministry of Elijah, as well as God's message to Assyria through Jonah. The King Divided, 1 King chapter 12. Ahijah's prophecy. First King chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine and following. Ten tribes to Jeroboam. Ahijah, a Shilonite, a Levite prophet, foretold Jeroboam's rise to power over ten tribes, splitting the kingdom. Solomon's heart had turned from God due to his many wives and their foreign god, leading to his disobedience. Ahijah's prophecy was a direct consequence of Solomon's future to remain faithful to God's commandment. This prophecy wasn't fulfilled during Solomon's reign, but during his son's Rehoboam's rule. Enduring that God's promise to David would remain intact until Solomon's death. Jeroboam challenges Solomon's son. Jeroboam, an Ephraimite, had been a servant of Solomon. After Solomon's death, Jeroboam returned from Egypt, where he had fled from Solomon's wrath. He challenged Rehoboam, Solomon's son, regarding the harsh policies imposed on the people. Rehoboam, instead of easing the burdens, decided to make them even heavier. This decision led ten tribes to rebel and form Northern Kingdom under Jeroboam, while only Judah and Benjamin remained loyal to Rehoboam. The kingdom divides in two, 930 B.C., 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16. The northern tribes led by Jeroboam formed the kingdom of Israel with Samaria as its capital. The newly formed kingdom consisted the tribes of Reuben, Ejakar, Zebulun, Dan, Natali, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Levi. Meanwhile, Judah and Benjamin remained under Rehoboam's rule in southern kingdom. Judah with Jerusalem as its capital. This division marks significant in the history of Israel, creating separate entities with distinct religious and political trajectories. Jeroboam's Problem and Solution Jeroboam's Problem, the Temple in Judah Jeroboam faced a significant problem. The temple, the central place of worship, was in Jerusalem, within the southern kingdom. He feared that pilgrimages to Jerusalem for religious festivals would undermine his authority, as his people might realign their loyalty to Rehoboam. This threat necessitated a strategic solution 
to maintain his kingdom, stability, and independence. Jeroboam's Solution, an Apostate Cult To prevent his people from returning to Jerusalem, Jeroboam established alternative worship site in Bethel and Dun. He set up golden calves at these sites and declared them as God who brought Israel out of Egypt, thus creating a new religion for Northern Kingdom. This act of apostasy led Israel into sin, setting a precedent for future kings who continued this idolatrous practice. Jeroboam's action were aimed at consolidating his power, but ultimately led Israel further away from God. Importance of Magisterium The absence of a Magisterium, a guiding religious authority, allowed Jeroboam to establish his apostate cult, a Magisterium which serves as the authoritative teaching body of the church would have provided the necessary religious direction and unity, preventing such divisions and apostasy. The lack of central religious authority led to a fragmented religious practice, contributing to the spiritual decline of the Northern Kingdom. Differences between North and South North Israel versus South Judah After the split, Israel and Judah <coughs> coexisted uneasily. Israel, often depicted as disloyal to Adonai, saw a succession of kings who perpetuated idolatry and deviated from God's commandments. Conversely, Judah experienced periods of religious reform under kings like Hezekiah and Josiah, who sought to restore proper worship and obedience to God. Despite these efforts, Judah had its share of unfaithful kings, but its lineage remained tied to the Davidic promise. Messianic promise through Judah, the Vedic dynasty. Despite the division, the Messianic hope persisted in Judah. The Davidic line continued, maintaining the promise of the future Redeemer from David lineage. This promise was a crucial for the people of Judah, providing hope and a sense of divine purpose during the periods of turmoil and exile. Nine dynasties in the north, one in the south. Northern Kingdom Dynasties Israel had nine dynasties with 19 kings over its 200 years history before falling to Assyrian. Each dynasty, starting with Jeroboam, failed to lead Israel back to God. The constant change of dynasties and the inability that came with it reflected Israel's spiritual and political turmoil. The kings of Israel often led the nation into deeper idolatry, ignoring the warnings of prophets 
sent by God. Southern Kingdom Dynasty Judah had one dynasty, the Davidic line, with 19 kings over 300 years. Unlike Israel, Judah's lineage continued even after exile, preserving the messianic hope. The Davidic dynasty provided a sense of continuity and divine legitimacy, even during times of unfaithfulness and political strife. This continuity was a significant factor in Judah's ability to eventually return and rebuild after Babylonian exile. Authority in the North versus Established Authority in the South Struggles for Authority The Southern Kings attempted to reclaim authority over Northern Kingdom, resulting in perpetual conflict. Rehoboam and his successors sought to reassert control over Israel, leading to wars and skirmishes between the two kingdoms. Judah's established lineage contrasted with Israel's unstable succession, highlighting the importance of legitimate God-ordained leadership. The continuous power struggle further weakened both kingdoms, making them vulnerable to external threats. Review of the Kings The Kings of Israel and Judah Examining the timelines of Israel and Judah's kings reveals a pattern of instability and apostasy in the north, contrasted with moments of reform and faithfulness in the south. Notable kings like Omri, Ahab, and Jehu in Israel, and Hezekiah and Josiah in Judah, illustrate the divergent paths of the two kingdoms. Israel's king often led the nation into idolatry and away from God, while Judah's kings, despite their flaws, had periods of significant religious reform and adherence to God's commandments. Omri, 1 Kings Chapter 16, verses 23 to 28. Omri established a short-lived dynasty that brought a decree of stability and prosperity to Israel. His reign marked a period of peace with Judah and alliances with neighboring states like Sidon. However, this peace also led to to the introduction of foreign religious practices, setting the stage for future conflicts between traditionalists and the ruling elite. Ahab, the worst, First Kings chapter 16, verse 28 to chapter 22, verse 40. Ahab, Omri's son, is considered one of the Israel most powerful yet worst rulers. His marriage to Jezebel, a Zidonian princess, led to the introduction of Baal worship in Israel. This alliance with Sidon further entrenched idolatry and moral corruption in the kingdom. Ahab's reign is marked by his confrontation with the prophet Elijah, who challenged the king's apostasy and prophesied the divine judgment. Jehu, the best of the bad, 
2 Kings chapter 9 verse 1 to chapter 10 verse 36. Jehu is considered the best of a bad lot among Israel's king. He eradicated Baal worship and executed Ahab's family, fulfilling Elijah's prophecy. However, Jehu did not turn Israel away from the sins of Jeroboam, continuing the idolatrous practices that led the nation's downfall. Sins of Northern Kings The kings of Israel led the nation into various sins, including idolatry, divination, and child sacrifice. These practices were direct violations of God's commandments and contributed to the nation's spiritual decline. The Northern Kings' failure to uphold God's laws had devastating consequences, culminating in the Assyrian conquest and scattering the ten tribes. Understanding the Prophets To understand the role of prophets in ancient Israel, it's essential to consider the context and purpose. Prophets were not primarily predictors of the future, but were called to analyze and critique a political social policies in line with God's demand for justice and faithfulness. Their messages often called for repentance and return to proper worship, sent to warn and woo. Prophets were sent to warn the people of impending judgment and to woo them back to God. Despite their warnings, the people often ignored the prophets, leading to the fulfillment of the prophesied judgments. The prophets' role was crucial in reminding the nation and their covenant obligation and the consequences of divine disobedience. Differences between God's prophets and other ancient prophets. Prophets in Israel were distinguished by their willingness to criticize the status quo and speak out against social injustices. Unlike the prophets in other ancient cultures who supported the king and established order, Israel prophets often stood in opposition to the ruling authorities advocating for righteousness and justice. Prophecy of the North Prophets like Elijah, Elisha, Amos, and Hosea were sent to the Northern Kingdom to call the people back to God. Their messages addressed the rampant idolatry and social injustices warning of the impending Assyrian conquest. Despite their efforts, Israel continued in its disobedience, leading to eventual destruction. Prophecy to the South In Judah, prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel called for repentance, and warned the coming Babylonian exile. Their messages combined warnings of judgment with promises of restoration, highlighting God's faithfulness and the hope for future redemption. Conclusion The Divided Kingdom serves as a cautionary tale of the consequences of estrangement 
from God. The narratives of the kings and prophets illustrates the importance of faithfulness, the dangers of apostasy, and the enduring hope of redemption through God's promises. The lesson from this period in Israel's history are relevant for all times, reminding us of the need for the steadfastness in faith and obedience, understanding the prophets, role and function. Prophets in ancient Israel were unique figures tasked with conveying God's messages to the people. Their primary role was to analyze and critique political and social policies through the lens of agonized demands for justice and faithfulness. Unlike the common perception of prophets as mere predictors of the future, their main function was to act as moral and religious watchdogs, holding the nation accountable to the covenant with God. They reminded the people of the leaders of God's loss and the consequences of staying from them, thus ensuring that the spiritual health of nation remained intact. Prophets were often called during times of national crisis or moral decline. Their messages are not always welcome as they frequently challenged the status quo and demanded repentance and change. The prophets serves as God's mouthpiece, delivering messages that range from warnings of impending judgment to promise of future redemption and hope. Through their ministry, prophets played a crucial role in guiding the spiritual and ethical direction of Israel. Sent to warn and woo. Purpose of Prophets The primary purpose of the prophets was to call the people back to God. They did this through a combination of harsh warnings and vivid imagery that conveyed the seriousness of their messages. The prophets often used dramatic language and symbolic action to capture the attention of their audience and drive home the urgency of repentance. Their goal was to move their hearts of the people toward obedience to God's commandments and to restore the covenant relationship between God and Israel. The prophets were deeply concerned with the moral and spiritual state of the nation. They addressed issues such as idolatry, social injustice, and faithfulness to God's laws. By calling out these sins, and urging repentance, the prophet sought to avert divine judgment and bring about a spiritual renewal. Despite their often dire warnings, the prophets also conveyed messages of hope and redemption, emphasizing God's enduring love and willingness to forgive those who turned back to him. Differences between God's prophet and other ancient prophets. Courage to criticize. One of the key differences between Israel's prophet and other ancient prophets was their courage to criticize the status quo. In many ancient cultures, Prophet serves the interest of the kings and the ruling elite, 
reinforcing their power and supporting their decisions regardless of their moral implications. In contrast, Israel's prophets boldly challenge kings and society, advocating for justice and loyalty to Adonai. For example, the prophet Amos fearlessly denounced the social injustices and exploitation of the poor by the wealthy elite. Similarly, the prophet Nathan confronted King David over his sin with the Chida, demonstrating that no one, not even king, was above God's law. This willingness to speak truth to power set Israel's prophets apart and highlighted their unique role in upholding divine justice and righteousness. Methods of Finding God's Will Committed to God Finding God's will involved total commitment, prayer, godly counsel, and obedience to the divine precepts. The prophets exemplified this dedication through their unwavering commitment to God's command and their willingness to undertake difficulty and often dangerous tasks to convey God's messages. Their lives were marked by a deep sense of calling and purpose, which guided their action and gave them the courage to understand against corruption and idolatry. The prophets sought to discern God's will through prayer and meditation, often receiving direct revelation and visions. They also relied on the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the counsel of other godly individuals. Their commitment to God's will was evident in their willingness to endure persecution and the hardship for the sake of their prophetic ministry. This total obedience to God's precepts serve as a model for the people, demonstrating the importance of their faithfulness and devotion in seeking God's guidance. Messages of the Prophets Key themes, the messages of the prophets can be summarized into several key themes. First, God, holiness, and judgment for sin. The prophets emphasized that God is holy and cannot tolerate sin. They warned that all people, as descendants of Adam, are born in sin and must face judgment unless they repent. Second, social justice. The prophets called out social injustices and exploitation, urging the people to treat one another with fairness and compassion. They emphasize that true worship of God includes caring for the poor, widows, and orphans. Third, repentance and return to faithful worship. The prophets urge the people to turn away from idolatry and return to the worship of Adonai. They called for genuine repentance and a renewed commitment to covenant a relationship with God. Fourth, promise of a redeemer. Amidst their warnings of judgment, the prophets also spoke of a future redeemer who would come to bear the punishment of sin for humanity. This messianic hope 
provide a source of comfort and anticipation for the people. By addressing these themes, the prophets sought to realign the nation's moral and spiritual compass, ensuring that the people lived in accordance with God's law and experienced His blessings. Unusual Methods Symbolic Actions To convey their messages effectively, the prophets often employed symbolic acts that dramatize their points and engage the people's attention. This action were sometimes bizarre, unconventional, serving as living parables that illustrated divine truths and warnings. For example, the prophet Ezekiel performed several dramatic acts such as lying on his side for 430 days to symbolize the year of Israel and Judah's punishment. Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 4 to 8 And the cooking food over dung to demonstrate the defiled state of the people. Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 12 to 15 These symbolic actions were designed to provoke thought and reflection, prompting the people to consider their ways and return to God. Another notable example is the prophet Hosea, who was commanded by God to marry a promiscuous woman named Gomer. This marriage symbolized Israel's unfaithfulness to God. And Hosea's unwavering for Gomer represented God's steadfast love and willingness to forgive his wayward people. Through these symbolic acts, the prophets communicated profound spiritual and reinforced their verbal messages. Conclusion The role of the prophet in ancient Israel was crucial in maintaining the nation's covenant relationship with God. By analyzing and critiquing political and social policies, warning of impending judgment, and urging repentance, the prophets serves as the moral and spiritual conscience of the nation. Their courage to criticize the status quo, total commitment to God's will, and the use of symbolic action made their messages powerful and enduring. The prophets emphasizes on God's holiness, social justice, repentance, and the promise of a Redeemer continues to resonate today reminding us of the importance of faithfulness, justice, and devotion in our relationship with God. Through their ministry, the prophets not only addressed the immediate needs of their time, but also laid the groundwork for the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemptive plan through Jesus Christ. Their legacy serves as a timeless reminder of God's unwavering love and commitment to His people, calling each generation to live in accordance to His divine will. Prophecy to the North Elijah and Elisha Elijah's Ministry Elijah, one of the most significant prophets in the northern kingdom of Israel, emerged 
during a time of a rampant idolatry and moral decay. His ministry was characterized by bold confrontation against the worship of Baal, a Canaanite deity that had infiltrated Israel's religious practices. The influence of Baal worship had been significantly enhanced by Queen Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab, who aggressively promoted this foreign religion. One of Elijah's most dramatic and defining moments occurred on Mount Carmel, where he confronted 450 prophets of Baal. This contest was designed to demonstrate the power of Adonai over Baal and to call the people of Israel back to the true worship of their God. Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to attest to see those deity to light sacrificial fire. Despite their fervent prayer and rituals, the prophets of Baal failed. Elijah then called upon Adonai, and fire miraculously consumed his water-drenched offering. This powerful demonstration led the people to proclaim, The Lord, He is God. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39 This event not only discredited they all, but also reaffirmed Adonai's supremacy and Elijah's prophetic authority. Elijah's ministry was also marked by personal sacrifice and hardships. He lived a life of austerity, often fleeing from those who sought his life. Yet, his unwavering faith and obedience to God set a powerful example. His encounter with God, such as one at Mount Horeb, where he heard God's voice in a gentle whisper, underscore the intimate relationship he had with Adonai. Elijah's ministry concluded with his miraculous ascent to heaven in a whirlwind leaving behind his successor, Elisha, to continue his work. Elisha's ministry Elisha, the successor of Elijah, inherited a mantle of prophetic authority and performed numerous miracles that demonstrated God's power and compassion. Unlike Elijah, whose ministry was often characterized by confrontation, Elisha's work included more miracles of healing and provision reflecting God's care for his people. One of Elisha's notable miracles was the purification of water of Jericho, which had been causing death and barrenness. By casting salt into the spring, Elisha made the waters pure, symbolizing God's power to bring life and restoration to Kings chapter 2 verses 19 to 22. Another significant miracle was the multiplication of oil for a widow in debt, ensuring that she and her sons could leave off to proceed. 
highlighting God's provision for the needy. Two Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. Elisha also played a crucial role in military and political affairs, providing counsel to the king of Israel. His intervention often resulted in miraculous victories and deliverance, such as the blinding of the Aramean army and leading them into Samaria. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 8 to 23 This acts underscore God's sovereignty over nations and his protection of Israel. Elisha's ministry, like Elijah, reinforced the message that Adonai alone was the true God of Israel, capable of performing wonders and providing for his people. His life and works served as a testament to God's enduring presence and power in the midst of a nation struggling with idolatry and disobedience. Amos and Hosea Amos Warnings Amos, a shepherd and fig tree farmer from Judah, was called by God to prophesy to the northern kingdom of Israel. His ministry occurred during a time of a relative prosperity, but significant moral and spiritual decline. The northern kingdom was plagued by social injustices, exploitation of the poor, and religious hypocrisy. Amos' message was direct and uncompromising, condemning these practices and calling for genuine worship and ethical behavior. Amos warned that Israel's superficial religious rituals and sacrifices were unacceptable to God because they were not accompanied by justice and righteousness. He famously declared, Let justice roll on a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. Amos chapter 5 verse 24. This call to social justice was the central theme of his prophecy, emphasizing that true worship of God must be reflected in just and compassionate treatments of others. Amos also prophesies the impending judgment of Israel, predicting that the nation would face destruction and exile if it did not repent. He used vivid imagery to describe the day of the Lord, a time of darkness and calamity for those who had turned away from God. Despite the harshness of his warnings, Amos also held out a glimmer of hope, foreseeing a future. Restoration for a remnant of Israel who would return to a genuine faithfulness to Adonai. Hosea's Symbolic Acts Hosea's prophetic ministry was marked by symbolic actions that vividly illustrated Israel's unfaithfulness to God and his enduring love for his people. God's commanded Hosea to marry Gomer, a woman known for her promiscuity. 
this marriage was living parable of God's relationship with Israel, which had been unfaithful by worshipping other gods and breaking the covenant. Hosea and Gomer's children were given symbolic names that conveyed God's message to Israel. Their first son was named Jezreel, predicting the end of the house of Jehu and the impending punishment for the bloodshed at Jezreel. Their daughter, Lu Ruhama, meaning not love, signified that God would no longer show love to the house of Israel. Their second son, Lo Ami, meaning not my people, symbolized the broken relationship between God and Israel due to their unfaithfulness. Despite of these harsh pronouncements, Hosea's message also conveyed the promise of restoration. He prophesied God would eventually heal Israel's unfaithfulness and restore the covenant relationship. Hosea's depicting of God as a loving and forgiving husband who seeks to win back his wayward spouse underscore the depth of God's love and his desire for reconciliation. Hosea's ministry highlighted the tension between judgment and mercy, demonstrating that while God's justice required accountability for sin, his love always seeks to restore and renew. Conclusion the prophetic ministries of Elijah, Elisha, Amos, and Hosea played crucial roles in addressing the spiritual and moral crisis of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. Their messages and action were aimed at turning to the people back to Adonai warning the consequences of idolatry and injustice, while also offering hope for repentance and restoration. Elijah and Elisha confronted idolatry and performed miracles that demonstrated God's power and care for His people. Their ministries emphasized the importance of exclusive worship of Adonai and obedience to his commandments. Amos and Hosea, through their prophecies and symbolic acts, highlighted the social injustices and unfaithfulness that plagued Israel, calling for genuine repentance and ethical behavior. Together, these prophets provided a comprehensive picture of God's expectation for His people, balancing the themes of judgment and mercy, justice and love. Their lives and messages continue to resonate, reminding us the importance of faithfulness, righteousness, and the ever-present possibility of redemption through a return to God. Prophecy to the South Prophets in Judah The southern kingdom of Judah experienced numerous challenges and crises, both political and spiritual. During these turbulent times, God raised up a prophet to guide, warn, and encourage the people. These prophets played crucial roles in calling Judah 
back to faithfulness and in providing hope for future redemption despite the eminent judgments. Isaiah and Micah Isaiah's Prophetic Ministry Isaiah, one of the major prophets of Judah, began his ministry during the reign of King Uzziah and continued through the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. His prophecies spanned significant historical events, including Assyrian threat and the miraculous deliverance of Jerusalem from the Assyrian forces. Isaiah's messages were multifaceted, addressing immediate political crises social injustice, and long-term spiritual issues. Isaiah is renowned for his powerful visions and poetic language. He called the people of Judah to repentance, emphasizing the need for true worship and social justice. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 For instance, implore the people to learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. He criticized the empty rituals and hypocrisy of the people urging them to return to a genuine relationship with God. One of Isaiah's central themes was to holiness of God. He profound visions of God's glory in temple. Isaiah chapter 6, where he called to his people prophetic missions. This vision reinforced his message that God is holy and just, and that he demands holiness from his people. Isaiah also provided visions of hope and redemption. He prophesied the coming of Isaiah, a suffering servant, who would bring salvation not only to Israel, but to the whole world. Isaiah chapter 53 is a powerful depiction of this servant, whose suffering and death would bring healing and forgiveness. This messianic hope offered a future where peace and righteousness would reign, providing comfort to a nation facing judgment and exile. Micah's Prophetic Ministry Micah, a contemporary of Isaiah, also prophesied during a period of significant turmoil in Judah. His messages were directed against the social injustices and corrupt leadership that plagued the nation. Micah's prophecies are marked by their concern for the common people and their condemnation of the exploitation by rich and powerful. Micah warned the coming judgment due to the people's sins, particularly the leader's greed and corruption. He vividly described the impending destruction of Jerusalem and the exile of its inhabitants. Micah chapter 3 verse 12 declared, Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be clothed as a field. Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins. Despite these warnings, Mika also spoke of restoration and hope. He prophesied 
the birth of a ruler from Bethlehem who would shepherd God's people and bring peace. This prophecy in Micah chapter 5 verse 2 is often associated with the birth of Jesus Christ, highlighting the enduring messianic hope that permeates prophetic literature. Jeremiah and Ezekiel Jeremiah's Ministry Jeremiah, often called as the weeping prophet, served during one of the most challenging periods in Judah's history. His ministry began the reign of King Josiah and continued through the last kings of Judah, including the devastating fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians. Jeremiah's prophecy were marked by his deep emotional engagement with the fate of his people and his relentless call for repentance. Jeremiah's messages were a blend of dire warnings and promises of a new covenant. He lamented the pervasive idolatry, social injustice, and unfaithfulness of Judah's leaders and people. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13, he vividly described the people's sin. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me the spring of living waters and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. His prophecies frequently warned the coming of Babylonian invasion and the consequent exile as a divine judgment of these sins. Despite his stern warning, Jeremiah also spoke of God's enduring love and faithfulness. He prophesies about the new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34, where God's promise to write his law on the hearts of the people ensuring a more intimate and personal relationship with Him. These commandments offered hope for future restoration and renewal, even as the nation faced imminent destruction. Jeremiah's ministry was fraught by personal suffering. He was often persecuted, imprisoned, and rejected by his own people. Yet, his unwavering commitment to God's call exemplifies the perseverance and faithfulness required of a prophet. His profound empathy and sorrow for Judas Clyde earned him the title of the weeping prophet, reflecting his deep compassion and concern for his nation. Ezekiel's Visions Ezekiel, a priest turned prophet, was among the first group of exiles taken to Babylon. His prophetic ministry took place in Babylon, where he used vivid visions and symbolic acts to convey God's messages to the exiled community. 
Ezekiel prophesies were marked by their extraordinary and often bizarre imagery, which served to capture the attention of the people and convey profound spiritual truths. Ezekiel prophesies can be divided into three main phases. The judgment against Judah, the judgment against the surrounding nations, and the future restoration of Israel. In the initial phase, Ezekiel vividly described the reasons for Judah's judgment including their idolatry and abominations. One of his most famous visions is the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel chapter 37, symbolizing the spiritual and national revival of Israel. In this vision, dry bones came to life representing the restoration of the people of Israel to their land and their renewed relationship with God. Ezekiel also performed symbolic acts to illustrate his prophecies. For example, he lays on his side for 390 days to symbolize the year of Israel's sins, and then for 40 days to symbolize years of Judah's sin. Ezekiel chapter 4 verses 4 to 6. These dramatic acts serve as a powerful visual aids to reinforce his messages of judgment and hope. One of Ezekiel's significant contributions was his vision of the new temple and restored worship in the future kingdom. Ezekiel chapter 40 to 48. This vision provided hope to the exiles, assuring them of God's continued presence and the eventual restoration of their worship and community. Ezekiel's detailed description of the new temple and its regulations emphasize the importance of holiness and the centrality of worship in the life of the restored community. Conclusion the prophetic ministries of Isaiah, Micah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel played pivotal roles in addressing the spiritual and moral crisis of Judah. These prophets were not only forecaster of doom, but also bearers of hope and restoration. Their messages delivered during times of political and social upheaval emphasized the need for repentance, justice, and faithfulness to God. Isaiah and Micah prophesied during a turbulent period, calling the people back to God amidst threats for powerful neighbors like Assyria. Their prophecies combined warnings of judgment and vision of a glorious future, including the coming of the Messiah, who would bring peace and justice. Isaiah's profound vision of God's holiness and the suffering servant, along with Micah's denunciation of social injustice 
and his messianic prophecies provided a comprehensive call to repentance and hope. Jeremiah and Ezekiel ministered during the final years of Judah into the Babylonian exile. Jeremiah's heartfelt laments and his promise of a new covenant highlighted God's unrelenting love and the potential for renewal even in the darkest times. Ezekiel's vivid vision and symbolic acts conveyed the seriousness of Judah's sin and the certainty of divine judgment, while also offering powerful images of future restoration and hope. Together, these prophets underscored the central themes of judgment and redemption, justice, and mercy that are integral to the prophetic tradition. Their messages remain relevant today, reminding us the importance of remaining faithful to God's commands, advocating for justice, and upholding to the hope of redemption through God's enduring love and promises. The legacies of Isaiah, Micah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel continued to inspire and challenge believers to live lives of holiness, compassion, and unwavering faithfulness to God. Conclusion The Divided Kingdom serves as a cautionary tale of the consequences of estrangement from God. The narratives of the kings and prophets illustrate the importance of faithfulness, the dangers of apostasy, and the enduring hope of redemption through God's promises. Thank you for joining us for today's deep dive into the Northern Kingdom of Israel. We have explored the division of the once United Kingdom, the tragic choices made by Jeroboam, and how Israel drifted further into idolatry under the succession of ungodly kings. From Ahijah's prophecy to the powerful ministries of Elijah and Jonah, we see God's persistent call to his people despite their rebellion. These stories offer timeless lessons on the consequences of turning away from God and the enduring mercy he extends through his prophets. Next time we'll be shifting our focus to the southern kingdom of Judah. Unlike Israel, Judah was ruled by kings from the Davidic dynasty, and though they experienced periods of faithfulness, they too faced judgment for their sin. We explore the prophecy of the exile, the role of the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah, and even touch on the concept of the prime minister in ancient Judah, offering insight into our understanding of the public. Don't forget to subscribe and to click the notification bell so you won't miss this important episode. Until next time, may we continue to learn and grow in our understanding of God's Word.